Hey everyone, my name is Danielle Lagoy. I'm one of the resident artists here at the resort at Paws Up. And we're gonna be doing a little painting here today with uh, a few techniques that I'll show you. And we'll be painting with some natural materials too to get some interesting textures. Um, so to get started, I have all my paint, paint um, poured out currently, just to save on time, but I use Windsor Oil and Newman. Um, it's pretty much my favorite kind of oil paint because it has a lot of pigment to it and um, it's what I've always used like in art school and stuff so I keep using it and when you come to the resort and you do a workshop you use that too and we're painting on wood panels as well so they're nice and smooth and flat and then it has a nice um, grain to it too that you can keep in your painting. So to get started I have a composition that I drew out prior because it's a little cold outside so usually we paint outside. Um, but we're inside today, um, and I have it drawn out here. It's basically like a scene of the Black River that you would see at the resort. The first thing I do when I'm starting a painting is I use a lot of walnut oil and um, burnt sienna. It's right here. Burnt sienna is like a really warm tone because it has um, warm tones in it. So um, to get started, I pour a lot of the walnut oil on my palette and I just do like a little dab of the burnt sienna and I mix it in. This kind of creates a stain color and it's perfect for the wood that you're going to be using. If you're using wood at home, you can use canvas too. But I'm just going to start filling in the painting. There's lots of trees. doing here basically is like setting the tone for your painting so you're starting off by this is kind of like the no pressure layer so even if it looks not super pretty you can go back in and fix it with all of the layers that you're going to put over top of it so it's super loose for this portion of the painting um, when I teach guests at the resort everyone's very like precious and delicate with their paint to start and then they start like loosening up as you get to it, but I just like to dive right in and get really abstract as to like start with. And if you've poured like a lot on your palette, you can easily do the sky by just doing basically the oil and just what the residue is on your on your brush. I'm gonna leave some marks for clouds like some bare patches. And those bare patches I'll fill in with like whites and like light blues and light um, yellows and stuff. So once we move on to mixing color, I'll show you how to mix like a, a pastel palette and then a palette for all of your like primary colors that you'd use to fill in here. filling in everything. I try to cover the entire canvas with the burnt sienna color to start because it, if I'm painting like cool colors over it, it creates a really nice um, like glow underneath. There's some rocks on the river and I don't know if it's starting to take shape in your eyes, but in my eyes it's makes total sense. So this is the river portion. You want, when you're creating a composition too, like say you're outside and you're, you're looking out and it's kind of daunting to try to paint something from life. Um, the way I typically get over that fear is framing your composition. And it's pretty, it's pretty like standard art school 101. If you're painting from life, you're gonna like just frame your composition by using your two fingers and going like that. So if we were outside right now, I would tell you to be doing that. There's reflections of the trees in the water as well that I like to add in. I like to keep a lot of the drippy marks too because it's a little more abstract and it fits with the river. 
but if you're wanting like a light color, you're just gonna use more oil and it's gonna dilute that pigment. And that's what you can use to fill in for your highlights. Your shadows, or like the darker colors in a composition, you're just gonna use more of the pigment to start. compositions that have like a point perspective that um, allows the viewer to travel through the painting versus just like you know having like mountains and then you know it can be a little um, stagnant as a painting so I try to pick compositions that are a little bit more interesting because then your painting will look more interesting even if you paint it kind of bad <laughs> um, but practice definitely makes perfect so that's the first layer that's all just one color the burnt sienna and then I typically move into um, the pastel portion. So for pastel colors, super easy. Basically, it's the majority of white. So you're gonna use all, pretty much a big glob of white. And you can use the same brush. I just try to clean it off in between mixing colors because it'll get really muddy if you don't. And then just use a dot, like literally just a smidge of a turquoise color. So I'm using, um, cerulean blue hue. Hues tend to have like less pigment so they're easier to mix pastel colors with. Um, but if you just have regular cerulean blue or if you're using acrylic paint, anything turquoise-esque will be really pretty for the sky. And I'm going to mix three colors. One is going to be the lightest blue, one's going to be like a middle blue, and then one's going to be a dark blue. And it's going to be like a gradient. So that's how typically the, the way the sky looks if you look at it from like the horizon line. Lightest blue will be near to the horizon middle blue will be in the middle, and then obviously uh, darker blue will be as you start looking up into the sky. So, second color. And a lot of people definitely, if they've mixed a darker color that they don't like, um, they try to just add more white, but it's better off just mixing a new color entirely because by the time you get that color to be what you want it to be. You've used so much white and you've probably wasted a lot of paint. Um, so I always tell guests that too, if they're trying to backtrack and make it lighter, just start a new glob, start from scratch. But I like adding a little hint of um, the yellow. I use Windsor Lemon for a lot of my paintings. Um, so it's kind of like a light airy yellow and some of them are a little heavier than that. So that's my light, that's my medium, and now I'm going to mix my dark. And this is uh, phthalo blue. I use this with every painting. <laughs> I never really use black, I just try to mix um, phthalo blue and burnt sienna that will make it like a rich color instead of like a, a cold black. So if you ever need to use black in a painting, that would be my suggestion is to mix those two. And now, I have a palette knife. You can find these pretty much anywhere um, in an art store. Michael's or maybe Hobby Lobby, I don't know. Um, but I'm just gonna start like mixing, oops. Collecting a lot of the paint on the, the palette knife. So I just try to scoop it up and it's, it's very similar if you've ever like frosted a cake. So you have like paint on there and then you're just gonna start Kind of adding it to your little surface. And the palette knife will give you a lot of interesting texture too. I try to leave some of that um, really warm orange in the background like from the burnt sienna because I think it's really interesting with the sky colors are over it. It kind of creates like that glow that we were talking about earlier. I do a lot of like quick motions when I paint too, because if you're really precious and you're trying to have it like be perfect, it's just gonna look like you 
kind of overworked it or was too precious with it. So I try to be fast. I try to be um, intentional, but fast for sure. Um, and just get the color on the panel as quickly as possible. And then you can kind of fiddle around with it afterward. I'm gonna go in between these trees. And oil paint is amazing because you can mix it on the palette. It will not dry out on you, <laughs> especially if you use walnut oil. It curates it, it like makes it a little bit more thinner too. So it's really easy to kind of blend those two layers together and create that gradient. And guests usually really love using palette knives. So we have them for everyone here if you do come um, and decide to do a painting class because it, it does feel like you're frosting a cake. It's like very satisfying just to kind of be outside and be painting. And if you are looking to like start more painting or trying to get some creative energy during this time. Um, I would suggest just like going on a hike and like you can even use watercolor. I do that when I hike and stuff and just bring paper or something lightweight. I've definitely brought like wood panels before but it's kind of a, a pain to bring back, especially after a long day. But I would just encourage you to get outside and 